money, everyone. Good money to us all. In fact, happy midweek, happy Wednesday to us all. A wonderful money to each and every one of us. I welcome you all to the devotion of this morning. We thank God for His grace and the opportunity to see another bright new day. My heart has always yearned for you, Lord. You, Lord. Your Lord. I need in you alone. I sing. My heart has always yearned for you, Lord. Your Lord. I need Jesus Christ. For the song. Oh yes, Lord, you are all that I need, and you are all that I ever needed. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus Christ, you are all I need. Jesus Christ, you are all I need. Mm. Oh yes, Lord. Jesus Christ, you are all I need. Oh yes, love. Jesus Christ, you are all I need. Sometimes in my life, I feel so empty. Yes, Lord. I feel, I feel so, so empty. empty. Mm. When I call you in prayers, you came through for me. Mm. Your power was blessing with us. Mm-hmm. Jesus, you are all I need. Good morning to you, all beautiful people. God bless you all. A very wonderful money to each and every one of you. God bless you. Don't mind me. I started a little bit late. I was struggling with the battery of my phone. <laughs> I forgot to charge my phone. My phone. I was waiting for my phone to. In fact, it is raw. God bless you this morning. It's another beautiful money that the Lord has given you and I the grace to be able to see. Jesus Christ, you are all I need. Huh? God is in this everything that you and I need. It's in this everything that we ever need. Facebook, I own no rights to the song. Mm-hmm. I run to him. Oh, yes. He loves and cares for me. He's the only one that cares for you and I. Mm-hmm. He's always there for me. Jesus. Jesus Christ. You are wrong, I need. You are all I need. Father, you are all that we've ever needed. We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord. Ah. Jesus Christ, you are all I need. Oh, hallelujah. Father, we need you, Lord. We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord. Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Blessed be your holy name. Thank you, Jesus, for another wonderful day like this. You are worthy, Jesus. Jesus Christ, you are all I need. Father, you are all. You are everything to us. Our sustainer, our provider, our keeper, our deliverer. Everything that is who you are to us, Jesus. We exalt you, Lord. We worship you. We bless your holy name. 
There is none to be compared unto you, Jesus. Blessed be your holy name. Adonai, El Shaddai, King of glory you are. We need you, Jesus. We need you. We need you, Lord. Without you, Lord, there is no us. Without you, Jesus, there is no us. Oh, have a Father, I adore your holy name this morning. I bless you. I give you all the glory, honor, and adoration. Father, once again, I thank you for the privilege and the grace, the ability to see another bright new morning. Father, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for the night. Thank you for the bright of life. Thank you for the sin and the sea battles that you fought for us throughout the night. Oh, Abba Father, Holy Spirit of God, I ask over, I ask right now that you take over the stage. Spirit of God, I decrease that you might increase in me. All I need, Lord, is you. All I need, Lord, is you. May nothing of me be seen of this message this morning. Every foul spirit of flesh, I raise a standard against you by the power of the Holy Ghost. By yourself, Holy Spirit, give us a better understanding of the remar of your word. For the Bible says, at the entrance of the word of God, there is light. May this word of God that is about to come forth this morning, may it lighten our path in the name of Jesus. May it heal us. May it deliver us. May it change situations around for us. May it turn our lives around for good. And for as many that have not received Jesus as their Lord and personal Savior, I pray for you this morning that as you watch this clip, may the Holy Spirit of God arrest you. May the Spirit of God by itself arrest you. That you will surrender it all and give it all to Jesus alone. Oh, have a Father, have your way. I cover myself with the blood of Jesus. I cover this platform with the blood of Jesus. Father, take your place. Take your place. I'm just a vessel your ends. Take your stage, Lord. Have your way. Have your way. I'm just a vessel, Jesus. Lord, in your hands. Hey. When you are true, Lord, please take the glory, God. I'm satisfied, Lord, just to see you glorify. Father, take the stage, take the stage, Lord Jesus. Hey, have your way, Holy Spirit, take your place. I'm just a vessel, when you are true, Jesus, Father, please take the glory. I'm satisfied, Lord, just to see you glorified. Father, take over the stage. Holy Spirit of God, take the stage. Take the stage. It all belongs to you. Thank you, glorious God, for I declare this meeting open in the name of God the Father. God the Son and God the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Woman of God, Mama, God bless you. Mama, how are you doing? I hope you are doing good and you are doing great. God bless you, Ma. I celebrate grace. Thank you for joining me this morning. Uh, I will not really be taking much of our time because I even started behind time schedule. I was charging my phone. I forgot to plug my phone almost all through the night. And the battery ran down. It is well. <laughs> I, I was not in Nigeria before. All the same, it is well. Mama, good morning. I celebrate grace. I celebrate grace. All right, wonderful people. It's another wonderful day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And uh, our topic this morning is a lessons from Elisha 1. Lessons from Elisha 1. So it's really going to be uh, a lot of series. The Holy Spirit of God is going to teach us a whole lot of things from um, Elisha. As we all know, Elisha was the successor of Elijah. So we are going to be learning a whole lot of things from him. And I pray that the Spirit of God will give us the grace and a better understanding of what God is trying to teach us from Elisha. And our memory verse is taken from Proverbs chapter 22, verse 29. Proverbs 22, 29. And he said, See it thou a man, see it thou a man diligent in his business, he shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before me, me. So when a man or a woman is committed to his or her business, the Bible is telling us when a man or a woman is committed to that which God has commissioned in his or her hands, the word of the Lord is telling us that, that such a man will not stand among me, me. But such a man will be outstanding and you will stand among kings. This is to say, we are not talking about, uh, uh, let, let me say, when a man or a woman is committed, or rather to that which God has commissioned into his or her hands, such a man or such a woman, there is nothing that will stop you not to be successful in life. One, there is nothing that will stop you not to progress. 
Two, because you are fulfilling scriptures. The Bible is saying whatever God has asked you to do. You see the way God is just starting with us since the beginning of this year. That is so wonderful. Whatever God has asked you to do. Whatever God has commissioned into your hands. Whatever the spirit of God is ministry telling you to do. The word of the Lord says when you stay committed to read. You are diligent to read. He said, thou a man diligent in his business. You are committed, like I said, fine and good. Even when the Bible says, seek, seek it first the kingdom of God and every other thing shall be added unto it, right? So when we seek God first, we ourselves, we need to look for something doing. We need to look for something doing. Like my mama in the house, Pastor Mrs. Mike, um, Pastor Mrs. Angela Mike, the other day, I think she launched a book. She launched a book. That is to say she's doing something else, even outside ministry. And what she's still doing, it is not outside the ministry, it's still inside ministry. Because a whole lot of us, sometimes we need books that we enlighten us the more. You understand? So she's still doing something inside, but she did not just fold her hands like that. So this is what the word of the Lord is. God is just trying to teach us this year. Because a lot of us, like I will always say, I love prophecy. Me, hey, Mama Nona. My, my mama in the house, mama, mama is watching me now. My pastor, Missy, she, she's watching me. I love prophecies so much. I love prophecies. Now when we talk about prophecies, it's good for us to receive prophecies. Just like, you see, we don't enter New Year, B. A lot of us, we have received a whole lot of prophecies this year. A lot and a lot of prophecies. I will always say, God will bless you, God will bless you, God will bless you. Fine, if, if, if somebody prophesied for you or somebody pray for you, God will bless you. God will really bless you only if after receiving that prayer, you now go about and you look for something to do. That is where you will see the blessing. Any man of God, woman of God, prophet of God, they can pray for you. God will bless you. You will prosper. You will do this. But the Bible is telling us, remember like I will always say, faith without work is dead. Faith without work is dead. And the word of the Lord is coming to us again in a new year like this because this is a new, this is a time that everybody wants to be so close to God. You understand? This is the time that everybody really wants, oh, all my dreams, all my desires, I just want them to come true. I just want them to come to pass. See it thou a man diligent in his business. He shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before me men. So you must have, ask, you must have to look for something to do this year. You must not be idle. You must not just fold your hands. If you really want to be, have, have we ever seen somebody that just fold hands from money from on the first to thirty first? Maybe the, the, the man is not working, the for instance, so the husband is not working, the wife is not working, and at the end of the month, maybe a one one company, one company will just call them to say, oh, "Yeah, come, 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 come and receive salary." I've never seen. I have never seen. Maybe the man is working, the woman is at home, or the woman is working, the man is at home. This this is vice versa. So that at the end of the month, something will come. Something will come. See it down a man that is diligent in his business. He will stand before kings and not men. So you want to be successful this year. You want to excel. You want to pro progress. You want to prosper. You must not just sleep 24 hours of the day. You must have to, to... We are going to understand better what the Spirit of God is trying to tell us this morning. Lessons from Elisha. One. So tomorrow we are going to be seeing to I think it's series. So let us quickly see. So I don't really want to spend much time on that on that memory verse, Proverb 22, 29. But I pray that the Spirit of God will give us a better understanding in the name of Jesus. So may God give us the grace to be able to look for that thing, something legitimate, something good though, to put our hands upon. Because the Bible says, whatever you find your hands doing, that is what the word of the Lord says. Do it with all your might in the book of Proverbs. Yes. So some of us we are committed, we are we are committed to the kingdom business, just as I am this as I am as I'm exhorting us this morning, right? After this Simon, I'm not just holding my hands, I say, Oh, because I finished preaching for the day, let me go and sleep. I have my business that I'm doing by the special grace of God as well. So I will not just go and sleep. So we should not be sleeping over prophecies. That is why you see if Jesus tarry, when it not it is not getting to the end of the of the year, a lot of people will not be angry. That, oh, immediately we enter New Year, they will prophesy, prophesy, prophesy. Let me tell us, like I will always say, prophecies still come to pass, so prophecies still work. Only if you walk towards them. This is what I used to tell people. I love preaching the truth of the gospel. Abba called to two, and the Lord answered me and said, write a vision. <laughs> Mama is here for us this morning. Let, let me read the, 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 the chapter, that, uh, the verse that Mama is just giving to us, I mean. Abba called to he said, write a vision. Write it down, make it plain or portable. Wrong with it. Wrong with it. 
So, the Bible says, where there is no vision, the people perish. Where, is, where there is no vision, the people perish, Abby. And the word of the Lord is telling us again now. The Bible says, the Spirit of God is telling you, and I, write your vision, make it plain upon tables. It's one thing for you to write. And it's another thing for you to do what? Now wrong with it. Now wrong with it. Then when there is the manifestation of that vision, people will see it and say, oh, see this vision. So where there is no vision, the people perish. And the Bible says, happy is he. Happy is he now. A man or a woman now, you receive the vision. It's good to, 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 like I said, just like Mama said. So once you write that prophecy down, you write that vision, you need to run with it so that at the end of the year, you will not be angry of whosoever that is prophesying for you. <laughs> you know, God just a verse for nothing. Eh? This is what always, it, 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 it's so rampant. When it was coming to December period, I saw some kind of funny, funny post in Facebook about some people. Some people, some carry shoe, some carry stone, some carry uh, different things. Do you know where they, were, they said they were going in that post? Oh, let me laugh. Mama, maybe you didn't come across the post. I trust you that those kind of posts, you, you normally used to share it for us to laugh. Eh? I saw that post. I said, oh, how which mama see this post that no single for Sharon? So carry shoe, right? Like seriously. So carry shoe, so carry stone. And they were going, they wrote it. They said they are going to beat pastor. Because every year by day, if I said, oh, all these people, that no wonder Hosea chapter 4 verse 6 said, my people are distressed for lack of knowledge. So now their prophecies are not real. Prophecies are real. I don't stand against our prophecies and all read. But where me, myself, I don't always like is after all, all, all set are done, a lot of people will just go and be sleeping and you are waiting for manners to fall. I share one. Oh, hey, mama, I not see no. <laughs> you say, I say, I not see him. You will not be waiting for manners to fall. Manna will not fall from heaven. The Bible makes you and I to understand. It's a diligent hands we rule. So this year, somebody, the year, today is just on the 12th and God is just speaking to us like this. God wants everything that you and I will ever want or desire this year to come to pass. Because the Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11, it says that the thought that God, the thought God has for us is of good and not for evil. The thought that God has for us is of good. I will always tell us it's our right, it's our best right. What God wants us to do after we put him first, he wants people to see the manifestation of his glory in our life. So it's not wrong for us as a people of God to swim in the ocean of wealth only if you remain in that grace. Not that after God has blessed you, you will not turn your back. No. You still keep on serving him. Serve him in truth and in spirit. This is one thing that God wants for us. Because he said the power to make words, I've given it to you. So a lot of us, we sleep over. Do you know that is why I said these are prophecies. These are prophecies. There are a lot of prophecies, 1,001 prophecies. So, like I will always say, God bless you, God bless you, can come from the, from the east, west, north, and south. After you receive the God bless you, don't sleep over it. Because the man of God that is, or the woman of God that is telling you, God bless you, know that they are not anointed. They are anointed. They carry grace, you understand? But by the time you receive God bless you, God bless you, you will not work. Nothing will happen. Nothing will happen. But, but by the time maybe a man of God or a woman of God tells you, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. You understand? Then you walk towards it. You will see the manifestation of those blessings. A lot of us have received prophecies this year. It's my year of this. It's my year of that. It's my year of that. Don't sleep over it. Even this message this morning now is waking me up. Because even myself for some time, it looks as if I'm not playing with my own business. Like seriously. So when I see messages like this, it always touches me. So serving God does not mean we should not do anything. You have to look for something to do this year. Serving God does not mean we should be sleeping from more 24 hours of the day. Seeking first the kingdom of God. And I strongly believe nobody will do it. Because even as I'm talking to you now, a lot of people are in their places of work. Thank God for the Europe system. Thank God for the Europe system. Even a lot of pastors, they are working. Why? Because they don't even want to depend. How, how much be tight? How much be offering? Let's tell ourselves the truth. Tight are offering that is not even enough to pay church rent. They will not depend on it. Why? Because they are families. They are families. So, and I pray that God will help us this year in the name of Jesus. I pray. So, I love to see women of God when they are doing something. I love it. I love it. Like even me, for instance, my pastor is working. And my mama, even my pastor's wife, she says clothes. Eh? Some of all those beautiful, some of all those beautiful, beautiful gum. You see that I'm, I normally used to put on. Some of them, I get it from her. I get it from her. So I love things like that. Not that some of us, after we receive prophecy, we just go and sleep. Eh? I'll be waiting for manners to fall. Manners not they fall. So this year, I don't know what God has laid in your hands to do. And I pray that the Spirit of God will open a lot of our eyes to see what God 
Hey, okay, mama. You see? Eh? He's working. And the other day, he got a, degree, a, a, a doctorate degree as well. Like I said, mama that is watching me this morning, the other day, mama launched her book. Mama launched her book. So this, this, this are replica of Proverbs uh, Proverb chapter 30, uh, 31. So I love women that are industrious. I love women that are industrious. So if you have the opportunity to do something, like I will always say, if God has even called you into ministry, do it. Do it. Was it not in, last year? It says my pastor wife even told me that she's even learning. She's learning something now, whether tailoring as well. You understand? Apart from that, like I said, some of all those beautiful, beautiful gowns you see that I used to put on, I get a lot from her. Yeah? Some of those gowns that you see, and you know, my used to sample, a lot I get it from her. That is it, Proverbs chapter 31. So sometimes it's good we do something. Being in ministry does not mean we should not do something. We should try to look for something else to do. And I, like I will always tell us, no money, no ministry. Thank God in the Europe system, that is laziness. You see her mama, eh? That is it. Thank God for the Europe system, like Mama just said. A lot of the pastors, they are working. How much is tight? How much is offering? Tight and offering that is not even enough to pay church rent. Eh? Still, you now still see that they say, ah, pastor, they chop money. Pastor, why they chop money? Sometimes, like, you know, like I said, when I see truth, I will preach it. And that is why sometimes when the Spirit of God is ministry to us, even this morning, I taught this uh, open heaven. But the way I'm even seeing it now, I'm seeing it in another dimension. Not that I'm compromising. I'm not compromising. But the fact is just the fact. The fact is the fact. Because sometimes when we are not there, we might not really know what all these people are going through. And that is why the word of God is telling us this morning that we should look for something doing it. Eh? Don't just depend on, Pastor, bless me. Eh, servant of God, tell me, God bless me, God bless me, God bless me. Because they've said, God bless me, I will not go and walk. Go and walk, oh. It's one thing to receive prophecy, and it's another thing to look for something to eat. So that be, when December is coming again, if Jesus tarry, you will not begin to say, hey, upon all this prophecy. So I pray that God will give us a better understanding in the name of Jesus. First King chapter 19, verse 15 to 21. Mama, thank you for those beautiful contributions. And he says, And the Lord said unto him, Go return thy way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when thou comest, anoint Isaiah to be king over Syria. And Jehu, the son of Nisha, shall thou anoint to be king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of Shaphat of Abeholiah, shall thou anoint to be prophet in thy room. And it shall come to pass that in that escaped the sword of Isaiah shall Jehu slay. And in that escaped the sword of Jehu shall Elisha slay. Yet I have left me seven thousand in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed to unto bar, and every man which have not kissed. This is the more reason a lot of us, we have to be very, very careful uh, when it comes to the things of God. Eh? We have to be very careful. That is why I used to tell people to carry the cross is not easy. One thing we need to know, God needs our service. Our service is required whether we like it or not. And if we must serve God, we must serve in a place. That is one thing I used to tell us. We don't serve men and women of God, but sometimes, sometimes we say, oh, they are serving men of God or women of God. No, our service is required in the acts of God. So sometimes when you are doing something, you just have to, no matter what you see, you just have to bear it. No matter what you see, you just have to keep going. No matter what you see, you don't have to back out. Let him that still, still no more, but rather let him labor, walking with his hands. Okay, oh, walking with his hands, the thing which is good that he may have to give to him that needed. Mama, God bless you. See scriptures for us. See scriptures. That is to say we must look for something. Eh? Let me read it again. Let him that still so that you will not go and be putting your eye in, 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 in what is not your own this year. That is the meaning. So that you will not go and be looking at what is not your own this year. But rather labor, work with your own hands. So that that thing which is good, eh? That he may give to, that you self, you, you will have access. Ephesians 4.28, God bless you, mama. Ephesians, so that you too, you will have access to give out to other people. So you must have to find something to do this year. You must have to. To look for something to do. Just try. Try. Don't just watch like that. Like I, I, like I was trying to say, a lot of us, maybe you, you, you serve in a church. Let me say our service is needed, for instance, in a church. And uh, maybe you, you face all kinds of things. Do you know what? Don't give up. Don't give up in the service of God. Because like I will always say, we serve God through men, fine and good. But no matter what you see, you just have to stay focused on the cross because you are not seeing all those men. Eh? Because you are not seeing all those men that is around. Sometimes when we look at what is going on in the world today, like I will always say, a lot of us, maybe you just say, I will never leave my house. But no. But by the time you know that you are going to, to church 
or rather going to that building is not for any man it's not for any woman no matter what you say the bible says he who put his hands in the floor and look back it's not fit for the kingdom of god so this is the open heaven of this morning and i must tell us the facts and the way i'm even teaching it now i'm seeing that other things are coming in are coming in mm? so whatever you see in your place of service you just have to stay focused on the cross you don't serve that man you don't serve that woman because the bible says god is a rewarder of them that they diligently seek him we serve god it is god that we we, we we the bible says whenever we are coming into his presence we enter the throne room of god with boldness is his throne room which is the house of god the the, the 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 place where we worship you understand so whatever you see you just have to carry the cross and stay focused on the cross and stay focused on the cross because our service is needed as well, even the, in the house of God. Sometimes only the men and the women of God, they cannot do it all, whether we like it or not. It's just like my own church now. Only the pastor will not sing. Only we will not play keyboard. Only we will not play jazz band. Just like mama that is watching. Only mama cannot play jazz band. Mama used to play jazz. So. Only mama cannot play jazz band. Only mama cannot sing. Only mama cannot be playing the keyboard at the same time. So whether we like it or not, our service is needed in the house of God, which is still work. So like th that is why I say when we are committed to the kingdom business, first and foremost, then thereafter we now will not look for other things to do. Because when we start working with our hands, by so doing, we too will be able now to support the kingdom business. So this is the open heaven for us this morning. The Bible is telling us that what we, whatever we find our hands to do in the house of God is God that just is, is a privilege. God has given us the privilege. So no matter what you see, don't misuse the opportunity. If you are the, if, that is, if you are the person you really have zeal for the work of God. Like I will always say, if you back off, back, back off from one, you oh I get appointment. Mama, no worry, no worry. God bless you for coming in. I appreciate your presence. I celebrate grace always. Don't worry, don't worry. God bless you for even coming in this morning. Those are your beautiful contribution. God bless you. God bless you. Bye bye, Mama. God bless you. Thank you very much. I don't take this grace for granted at all. I don't take it for granted. So, like I was saying earlier on, we all, in one way or the other, whatever we find ourselves to do is a privilege. Is a privilege. Yes, is indeed a privilege. So I will always say that is why you see, like me, I used to say, if this rapture come, eh, Richard Musa, nothing will stop you. Like seriously. Nothing will stop you at all. If right, if tropezan, because in ministry I have seen. In ministry I have seen things. You know what they call things, but like I said, I told myself nothing, absolutely nothing can make me to be distracted. Nothing will make me to give up. It's my father's business. It's my father's business. He said they that are planted in the house of the Lord, they will flourish. They will flourish. I have seen you do, do you know what they call things so sometimes when i see some people i will just laugh i say i don't even think you have seen i have seen things when it comes to ministry i have seen but the more i see the more they are making me to be stronger so we don't back out in our father's business you don't back out but what do you need to do god will give you the grace to finish strong because these are part of the cross that we need to carry these are part of the cross that you and I will need to carry for Jesus. And if all these things does not happen like I will always say. Then what, how do you now expect that you are serving the true God? So no matter what you see in ministry. Don't back out. You don't back out. You stay strong. Carry the cross and follow Jesus daily. At the end is the rewarder of day that diligently seek him. So sometimes no matter what comes your way. You need to be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might. You need to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So, that is what the Bible is telling us because to serve is a privilege. A lot of us, in one way or the other, maybe you are faced all manners of oppression. You are faced all manners of things that you don't, have, you, that, 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 that you don't even expect. Don't worry, it's part of the cross. You just keep on carrying the cross. Don't back out. Do you know why? A lot of things will come. Remember the Bible says, the very elect at the end of it all shall be deceived. And if the very elect shall be deceived, all this perse persecution, trials, and a lot of things that a lot of us are facing, they will not come from uh, uh, people that are far. Like as I'm here now, maybe God forbid bad thing. Any, uh, somebody that tie maybe a red wrapper. I just see somebody that tie red wrapper, for instance. Christian life is always a bad battle. Oh, woman of God, I'm so happy to see you this morning. This is how God works. Sometimes, sometimes when it looks as if, okay, 
Am I, am I talking to somebody at all? You will just see that God, the Spirit of God will just bring another grace. Yeah. Eh? I celebrate you, Mama. God bless you. That is my beautiful woman of God, all the way from UK. Woman of God, Minister Rachel Rina, how are you doing? How is this? Like I said, when you, whenever you see me teaching, there are some people that enter. I will pause. I will pause and honor them. Because like I said, I will pause and honor them. It's not easy. For somebody to just jump in in a live video this early morning as if they don't have something doing. They, every one of us, we are busy. Every one of us, we have something doing. 1,001. But sometimes you just create chance because why we love the things of God. Because why your heart pants towards the things of God. So mama, I celebrate grace. How are you doing? How is school? How is the family? In fact, my prayer is that this year, may God grant all your earnest our desire. And may God wipe away all your secret tears. That is my prayer for you. Woman of God, may God wipe all your uh, secret tears because the Bible says they that sow in tears, they shall reap in joy. They shall reap in joy. I am fine, busy. I understand. You need work and job. That is just it. That is just it. That is it. God bless you, Mama. God will, God will support you. God will back you up. Yes. God will support you. God will back you up. Don't worry. My prayer, like I said, I don't know what you are believing God for. Every of your secret tears, may God wipe it all. Every of your pain that you cannot even share with any man. Whatever pains that comes to you sometimes that you cannot share with any man, but you only have God to always share it with. I'm telling you, watch out. So stay focused on your focus. Whatever God is, that is what we are telling, uh, we just taught uh, our memory verse just now. says, a man, it says, uh, Proverbs 22, 29, it said, see it down a man diligent in his business. So just stay focused on your focus. Whatever God is telling you to focus on, like she said, I am fine. Be busy with uni work and job. She's a minister of God. She's a woman of God. She's a minister of God. She's a woman of God. You understand? And she said, I am fine. Be busy with uni work and job. So she's working as well, a mother for that matter, a mother. So that is what our memory verse just taught us this morning, that when we are diligent in our business, we will stand among kings. We will not stand among me men this year. So we must focus on our focus, be diligent in whatever God has asked us to do. We just have to be committed to it. We just have to be committed. And I love the, uh, uh, that, that contribution. Like Mama said just now, she said, uh, Christian, I want to read it again. Christian life is always about battle and blessings. Yes. So when you face the battle, God will give you victory. When you face the battle, like we will always say, every test that comes our way gives us what? Testimony. And every test that comes our way is the battles that we are facing. It's a battle. So I don't really know whatever you have been facing, but I'm telling you, don't, don't just back out. Every test that comes our way is a, is, is a test is a trial of our faith that will make us to testify. So every battle that comes our way, it gives us victory. And when victory comes, blessings surround each and every one of us. So that is why you see whatever comes our way, we don't back out. You don't just back out because why you have a God that will fight all battles for you. So whatever we find our ends to do, like I said, is a privilege. So we just have to stay focused on the cross. We don't back out because Jesus says, he who put his, his hands in the plot and look back, is not fit for the kingdom of God. And like I will always say, yes, we can do the work of God anywhere, everywhere. We can do the work of God anywhere, everywhere. But whether we still like it or not, in our, in our various places of uh, worship, our service is needed. Our service is needed. And like I said, we don't serve men and women of God, but sometimes we might see some kind of script that we say we serve man of God. If I want to explain it, we serve God. Uh -huh. It is God that we are service, that we are serving. Our service belongs to who? To God and God alone. Our service belongs to God. So in our various centers of worship, like I said, fine and good, like in my choir now, only me cannot be singing and only, I don't even know how to play the keyboard, talk less of jazz band. I don't even know. So you see each and every one of us, our service is needed in the house of God. So that is why the Bible is telling each and every one of us, whatever we find to do for God is a privilege. Is a privilege. Because why? Each and every one of us, he said, the word of the Lord, he said, he, uh, the word of the Lord is telling us this morning, he said, God, God says he has several thousand prophets that have not bowed, that have not even kissed, eh? Several thousand replacements. So sometimes, 
when God is commissioning something into our, uh, into our hands, whether in your place of worship or whatever is laying in your hands to do, in your hands to do for him, do it hastily and speedily so that it will not slip out of your hands. And I pray that God will always give us the grace to act on time in Jesus' name. Mama, God bless you. Thank you, ma. And the Bible says, now, and, uh, and he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, let me, I pray thee, kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow thee. And he said unto him, go back again, for what have I done? This was Elisha and Elijah. Now, remember, like I said, we are taking lessons from Elisha. The, today is one. And he says, and he returned back from him and took a yoke of oxen and slew them and boiled their flesh with the instrument of the oxen and gave them unto the people. And they did it. And he arose and went after Elijah and ministered what unto him. Now, I want to compare this verse with the book of Matthew. A particular verse in Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8, let's see verse uh, 21. And another of his disciples said unto him, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. But Jesus said unto him, Follow me, and let the dead bury their dead. And when he was entered into the ship, his disciples followed him. That is to say, in our dispensation today, eh, it is not between us and God. Carry the cross. Follow Jesus. How do we carry the cross? In our place of, in, in our church, maybe in your church, you are, you are, you are a chorister, you are a minister, uh, you belong to one department on the other. These are the cross that we are carrying. And that, that, is, the, that is our service for God. That is our service for God. Now, it is not be that service. The Bible says salvation is personal. You need to keep, keep on working it out for God now with fear and trembling. You work it out gradually every day with fear and trembling. You no longer focus on all those uh, 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 oppression you will be facing. You no longer focus on all those things that will get you bitter, that will get you angry. I say, me, ah, I will not go again. I will not do this again. No, as a child of God, it should not be. It should not be. It should not be. You understand? But what do you do? Because you focus on the cross. You, you want to carry the cross daily and follow Jesus. No matter what you see, you say, sometimes we say, God, if not be you. God, if not be you. A lot of us, what, what we are seeing today, when we were in the world, when we have not given our life to Jesus as our Lord, our personal Savior, what we are seeing today, maybe from uh, 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 in our places of services, we will not, we cannot even take it. We cannot even take it. But thank God for God who has given us grace through the Holy Spirit. Through the Holy Spirit to begin now to carry all this, carry the, that is why I say, he, he who does not carry the cross cannot wear the crown. So you must carry the cross. You must be it. No matter what you see, just keep pushing. Just keep pressing. Just keep pushing. No matter the persecution, the trials, the oppressions, like I said, these things will not come from any, it, it will not come from one native doctor that is still tiny rapper. It will come from seeing me see you, brother and sister, in the household of faith. So that, that will even annoy you the more. <laughs> it will not come from one native doctor that is tiny rapper. It will not come from any juju priest. Do you know why? Because if it's coming from native doctor that tiny rapper or juju priest, you will not get angry. You will say, because you don't even know God. <laughs> you will say, because you don't even know God. I pray for you that you receive Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. But when it's coming from a brother or a sister in the household of faith, aha, uh -huh, not there for the sweet. Eh? So as you go to church, you can still do me this one. You can, ah, because of you, I will not come to this church again. Because of you, I will not do this again. No, it should not be done. It shouldn't be. Because those are part of the cross. And like I said, me, the more I see things like that, eh, sometimes I wonder if they are thinking about heaven. Okay, oh mama. So, but you that want, that you that don't want to miss it, because I've come to realize in life that all these things that come from, from a, a household of faith, they are just side distractions to us, like seriously. And we just have to be focused. Because why? The end time is already here. Perilous times are here, somebody. The end is here. So by the time you get off with any little distraction, sorry, what if the trumpet sound? A lot of them, like mama said, she don't even know if they are thinking about heaven. A lot of them, because sometimes before you think of oppressing somebody, you should be know that ah, this person is human being like you. Is human being like you. So sometimes, like I said, a lot of things we take today is because of Jesus. We will say, oh God, if not because of you.
if not because of you. Like I said, a lot of us, with what we are seeing, a lot of people would have even feel like, I, I, I want to sit down for us, make us have God. But why? Because of the cross. Because your heart beats towards the things of God. Because you want to fulfill scriptures. Because the Bible says, he who fails in list, fails in all. He who fails in list, fails in all. That is why you see a lot of us, we keep on pressing. We keep on pushing. Because why? We don't want to get distracted. Like I said, these things we are facing today, it will not come from any juju priest. It will not come from any native doctor. It is the brothers and sisters or even the top, top people, the top leaders we are even looking on to. Let me tell us the fact. The top leaders we are even looking on to. So that if they will do the thing, you will just say, ah, have we not seen a lot of, maybe God forbid, but a pastor or, uh, 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 um, how will I put it? Let me use a pastor, for instance. Or a general overseer. Immediately any little thing happened. Hey, the church member will say, hey, yeah, 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 we... A lot of that one, a, a, a lot of people fail to just go down. It is happening in our world. It is happening in, in Christendom today. Why? Because they thought that is that man or woman of God that they are serving. That they are serving. But by the time you know that these people are just vessels and we serve God through them, whatever service you think you are rendering in the house of God is not for any man, it's not for any woman. It's to, it's to God. You just have to keep focus on God. Because whenever the distraction is coming and you allow it, at the end, if the trumpet sound, you will not say it's because of my pastor. I refuse to be distracted. No matter what I say, I will carry this cross and follow Jesus. Like I said, sometimes our service does not even end in the house of God. We can serve God anywhere, everywhere. Our service does not just end there, but it begins. And our service must begin from our heart. It must start from your heart, genuinely. I'm not talking about hypocrisy. I'm not talking about eye service. Service starts from the heart. Make a first pull down one now. Our service to God, it starts from our heart. It starts. Service, it comes from the heart. I'm not talking about the hypocrisy aspect or the eye service aspect. Let the service come from your heart, first of all. And when the service comes from your heart and God sees that you are serving genuinely, no matter what comes your way, He will give you the... Like I said, for me, this, this woman you see sitting down here, the more I face things, the more I get stronger. The more the battle are tough, the more I am getting stronger. By the special grace of the Almighty God, not by my power. Because it is my father's business. It is my father's business. If, 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 if God forbid bad thing, if rapture son, now I will not say, oh, father, it is because of this one. So I must have to be focused and forget about distractions. And like I said, anything that will distract me, I will avoid it. In order for me to be able to end well. Anything that will distract me in this race. I will avoid it and I will still run it. I will keep running. I will run the race. And I will fight the good fight of faith to the end. So we don't back out. Because it is all of our business. Not all of our own. But I pray that God will give us all the grace. That whatever we see in life. We should stay focused on Jesus, him and him alone. Stay focused on the cross in Jesus' name. And may God give us the grace to forbear whatever that comes our way in the place of service for the Lord. That we just say it is because of the cross. Because like I said, he who does not carry the cross will not wear the crown. I don't know why I'm teaching this Simon like this. This was not how I, 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 I ever taught it this morning. This was not how I taught it this morning. But I pray that God will help us. Because this is the second time now I'm repeating this message this morning. I taught it in our open heaven this morning online. And I'm teaching it right here again. Even in a very different way. This is just what sometimes God can do. Because the more I've come to realize that the more we... <laughs> mama Mary, you are looking for my trouble. This this, this, my mama, you are looking for my trouble. Mama Mary, call me, call me. You don't know what I'm saying, call me. Call me when you are free. Let's talk. Good morning, Mama. God bless you. Thank you for joining. Thank you. God bless you. Call me. Let's talk, please. So let us quickly see today's message. Let's see. The message says, We can learn many lessons from the life 
and times of Elisha, the successor to the great prophet Elijah. In the next few days, we shall consider some of these lessons and we will start with diligence today. For example, we see that Elisha, a prosperous farmer's son, was walking alongside his father. All right, I'll be expecting your call. Okay, mama. Elisha, a prosperous father's son, was walking alongside his father employing when Elijah met him. He could have refrained from joining the workers, but he worked with them because he was a diligent man. That is why I said earlier on, every one of us, our service is needed. In our place of worship, our service is needed. Whatever you, you, you do, like we saw it now that Elisha himself would have said, mm, I don't want to walk home. Why? Because my father is the owner of this farm. That is the boss. What belongs to his father is his own. That is the boss. Ogak pata pata. Is there, uh, hey, he would have said, me, I'm the Ogak pata pata, so I don't need to work. Because it's my father that employs you people. Oh yeah, you all should start working. And he will now start commanding them, chief commander. But I want to let us know when it comes to the king's business, this work is for everybody. The fivefold ministry, the pastor, the apostles, the evangelists, the teachers, the prophets, we all are involved. All ends on deck for the Lord. The Bible says the harvest truly really is plentiful, but the laborers, they are few. The harvest truly really is plentiful, but the laborers are what? They are few. So God wants each and every one of us to invest for him. He said many are called, but few are chosen. Why don't you and I be among the chosen ones in this end time to become vessels in the ends that God will make use of? To deliver, to save, to set free through the power of his word. Don't say you cannot do it. The Bible says we can do all things through Christ that threatens us. So you see, the word of the Lord is telling you and I that Elisha, a prosperous farmer's son, was working along his father employing when Elijah met him. But he still worked. The revelation I got from this particular verse is telling us, us the work of God is for every one of us. All hands on deck. Mama, you don't show. You don't show. That is my beautiful mama in the house. My minister. My gorgeous mama Sita. Minister, I'm a righteous. I celebrate grace. God bless you. I don't cite your thumbs up. You never have a right. I cite your profile picture already. <laughs> God bless you, ma. Thank you. How are my kids doing? I know they are already in school. God bless you, mama. Thank you, ma. So all eyes must be on deck. It's our father's business. We are, we are, we are studying this morning um, lesson from Elisha. We are taking lesson from Elisha, who was the successor of Elijah. So the Bible is telling us this morning that every one of us, all ends, must be on deck. It's our father's business, and um, we must be diligent. We must be committed to it. You see, since the beginning of the year, God is just talking about commitment, commitment. We need to be committed to that thing that God has commissioned into our ends. That is why I said the Holy Spirit, the way it will speak to me might not be the way it will minister to you. The Holy Spirit speaks to us in different dimensions. So what the Spirit of God is laying in your hands to do this year, I don't know. Whatever he has commissioned, I don't know. But whether you like it or not, we all, we have a particular goal. We all, there is one commission there that brings us all together whether we like it or not this one is not different but your own is to do your own anyhow you want to do it because Paul planted apollo watered but god will now give us all the increase so when it comes to the great mandate the great commission to go and preach the gospel that one there is no title that is bigger than anyone it is for every one of us do you know that sometimes Maybe those of them that even carry out those titles, I am a, I am a bishop, I am a this, I am a that. Sometimes if they don't even avest, and you that did not even carry any title, you avest souls. On that day, your crown will be much more, it, 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 your crown, nobody will drag it with you. So that is why the, the, the Bible says the harvest is plentiful, the, the laborers are few. It is not how far, it is how well. So don't, when it comes to the work of God, don't, don't undergrade yourself. God can use anybody. This is what I used to say. If you give yourself, you make yourself available for God, he will use you. Even more than me that you see that I'm sitting down here. He will use you. Because what is in you is not what is in me. God bless you. Thank you for joining. Mr. Moses, I bear your dear joy. No? God bless you. If, even if, if, I, if I don't mention the name, well, pardon me. If you don't undirect yourself, the way God will use you, if you give yourself, make yourself available. He said, I look for a man and I found none. You will even do it more than me. That is sitting down here. So I'm 
challenging you that you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you because there are there is something in the inside of you like I will always say that the word your word is waiting for it to manifest so don't undergrade yourself don't look down on yourself and don't let anybody look down on you like I will always say it is God that gives grace it is God that gives grace it is God that gives us grace because the Bible says it said my grace shall be sufficient for you my grace shall be sufficient for you. So we all, we must be diligent and committed to that which God has commissioned into our hands to do. Don't play with it. Don't joke with it. Because Proverbs chapter 22 verse 19, that is where we took our memory verse from. I will not take us back there. He said, likewise, to excel spiritually, you must seek the Lord diligently. You want to prosper spiritually. You want to prosper physically. Anyhow, you must seek God because the Bible says they that seek God, that God is a rewarder of, of they that diligently seek him. So it is God that rewards men. It is God that will reward each and every one of us. That is why I say don't look down on yourself. Don't say I don't have a title. I have not been, uh, I have not been ordained. Eh? I have not been ordained. I have not been, they, they've not ordained me as a, 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 a ordained minister. Or oh, they've not even ordained me at all. I don't even have a title. I am just a brother. I am just a sister. Let me tell you something. It's even much more better you remain a brother or a sister. Eh? And you work for God sincerely from your heart. You work for God in truth and in spirit. On that last day, nothing will stop you not to make heaven. You will even be much more better than those that the Bible says on that day. They will say they perform signs, they perform wonders, they heal the blind, they heal the sick, they did all manners of miracle. But yet, he will tell them, Go away, I know you not, ye workers of iniquity. So, when it comes to the king's business, like I will always say, it's not all a by title, it is not how far, it is not all that started the race that we end it. The Bible says, the first shall become the last, and the last will become the first. Eh? That is why the things of God, they are mysterious. I will always say the judgment, eh? the judgment of God, I is going to judge that the nobody knows. So when it comes to the kingdom business, don't underrate yourself. Don't look down on yourself, and don't still let people underrate you, or let people look down on you. No, because like I said, it is God that gives us this grace that we are talking about, not men. Not men. Be diligent. You want to prosper. Be diligent. Be committed to that which you are doing. Another lesson we can learn from Elisha is a good leader. Is good leadership. Elisha was a man. He was a good leader. We are learning lessons from him so that we too, we can become like him. Good leadership. Every one of us, as we all know, in one way or the other, we are leaders. In our homes, Sometimes in the various departments where we find ourselves, sometimes in our business world, in one way or the other, we are, we are leaders. So Elisha is good. There is another thing we can learn from him is that he was a very good leader. As successful as he was, he led by example. So leadership is by what? It's by example. We saw what he did. Even despite the fact his, his father was uh, 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 the, 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 the chief owner of the farm, his father was wealthy, but he still humbled himself and he worked with what? With his father's what? Laborers. He worked with his father's what? Laborers. He was a good leader. As successful as he was, he was in the field while I are employing in his father's farm. That is First Kings chapter 19 verse 19. That is why I said when it comes to the king's business, title does not matter. Our father's farm today is this business. Go and preach the gospel. Our father's farm today, hmm? Abby, is it not the word of the Lord that says uh, uh, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few? So we are, uh, we, we, this is our farm. This is our farm. This is our father's farm. It belongs to God. It does not belong to any man, any woman. It does not belong to any pastor. It does not belong to any pastor's wife. It does not belong to any prophet, any bishop, any evangelist. I'm calling the, the fivefold ministry, any prophet any teacher it does not belong to anybody it all belongs to god so we all must invest what bountifully for the for the lord before his return from january to december if even if it's only one so january you win one so february you win one so in jesus tarry at the end of uh, the year you've you've won 12 so i like, say winning souls does not mean it should be only your your cycle 
provided those souls, you follow them up, and you let you you you, you lead them to the way of Christ, and you leave them for the Holy Spirit to take care of. Oh, mama, mama, I, I, oh, I fat. Oh my God, I don't know what to say. God bless you, woman of God. Thank you for, 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 for stopping by. Thank you for coming in. Thank you for your support, always. Minister, I'm graceful. God bless you. Thank you, mama. God bless you, ma. I celebrate grace. God bless you. I'm humbled. I'm honored to have you in this morning. Again, God bless you, ma. Thank you for always being there. And may God continue to back you up. Eh? He will continue to be your support all the way around in Jesus' name. Thank you. So, like I said, it's not only for the fivefold ministry. Don't underrate yourself. Eh? It's not only for evangelists. It's not only for pastors. It's not only for bishops. It's not only for apostles. It's not only for the teachers. It's for every one of us. So from January to December, if it's 1 January, 2 February, February, at the end of the year, 12, if Jesus tarry. So soul winning is for every one of us. None of us should underrate ourselves in this ministry. In this, Mama and I to pass. In this ministry of reconciliation is for every one of us. I really promise that this morning I will not be taking much of our time. We are taking lessons from Elisha. Elisha was a good leader. We saw how humble he was, and he was busy in his father's business. Just as we are today, we are also busy with the Lord by the special grace of God. And I know a lot of us. We are going to do exploit for God this year. In any area that God has called you, you just go. You see that the, the, the message is just coming. In fact, telling us that this year we can do much more than we ever think we can do for the Lord. He was a leader. He, he was a leader by example. And this one, he said, he, Elijah, Elisha was a leader by example. He's not that kind of a leader that sits down in his house. He said, he's not that kind of a leader that sits at home. I begin to issue command. <laughs> this one make me to laugh. Eh? Is this not that kind of a leader that we just cross into our leg and sit there in the ass? You begin to issue commands to people. And you, are, you, you, you will be issuing command. Do this one. Do that one. Do this one. Do that one. And you, you will fold your hand and sit there and say, yes, you know, I am, I am this, I am that. Because you know now, all those titles, I am this, I am that. I am not doing anything. So he's telling us this money, all hands must be on deck. All hands must be on deck. Eh? Whether you are a bishop, you are a this, all hands must be on deck. And like I said, even you that does not even carry the title, you don't even carry the title, maybe you are just a brother or a sister. If you win more souls for God, on that day, nobody will wear your crown. You don't even carry the title. Eh? You are not even ordained. You know, in, in, in ministry today, we have ordained minister and unordained. And maybe they have not even ordained you, you are just a brother or a sister. You are never a dickiness, a dickin. But you, your heart just pants towards God. And, and you are, I said it earlier on. And you are serving God sincerely from your heart. If rapture sand, everyone will be glad. You will wear your crowns. Then be like those of them that carry titles, doing miracles, doing everything. Eh? At least the Bible says on that day is going to tell a lot of them, get out. Go away. I know you not here workers of iniquity. That is if a lot of them did not repent to uh -huh. If a lot of them did not did not repent, that is what will be their portion at the end. Eh? But you that think that you, you just belittle yourself and you, you were just going about. I took time to go through the open heaven of yes, it was eh, Mama, you see? Eh, you see, God bless you, man of God. Thank you, Mama. God bless you. Like seriously, it has really been a blessing to us and then that is why I don't really know. When God was evil laying it, I say God. God has a way of doing his things sometimes that we don't really understand. I know that as time goes on, as we are going into the year deeper, deeper, maybe a lot of people will never want to hear again. Eh? You know when the thing is getting deeper, we will now begin to see deeper revelations concerning what we really need to do for God. So as well as a means of evangelizing Jesus to the world. Just like this morning is teaching us, and I will always say, if we want to make heaven on the last day, we will not just put it, just like we want to cook food. You just put rice. If you cook rice, rice without stew, you, you will not be able to eat it like that. Even if you are eating the white rice, but at least you cook it, you did not eat it raw. So to make heaven, we need all the curry, all the maggi, all the salt, all the ingredients together. Because the Bible says, he who fails in list actually does what? Fails all. So we must pray that God will give us all the grace so this is what the word of God is teaching us this morning. And one thing I love most, thank God that minister I'm a graceful inside the house. I was so happy when I saw this one. He said, why he himself will not uh, lift a finger to do anything? To, to lead 
To lead is to serve, according to the injunction of our Lord Jesus Christ in Matthew 20, 27. He was diligent doing his business when he received the call to the office of a prophet. Now, listen to where, where, where I love so much. The word of God now says, he said, children of God should not be idle. He said, children of God should not be idle. Away in the name of, hey, I love this part, eh? He said, children of God should not be idle. All in the name of a, all in the name of a call that could be for a set time. They must find themselves busy doing legitimate business. As a child of God, you don't just say because I have a calling, God has called me into ministry. I'm not going to do anything. I just want to fold my hands. If possible, like I said. I have a lot of women of God, spiritual leaders. A lot of them write books. A lot of them write books. Those are visions. Those are visions attached to their ministry. Those are visions. At least, I gave an example of my pastor's wife just now. I gave an example. She sells clothes as well. Majority of those gowns you see me that I used to put on, once in a while, she still go to market and say, oh, I've just gone to market. Oh, yeah, make her come by. Or maybe she's going, she will ask you, do you need anything? My pastor himself is working. He's working. See her down a man. Like I said, in the Europe system, you see a lot of pastors today, men and women of God, they are working. How much is the tithe? How much is the offering? That is not even enough to pay the church rent, first of all. So, if God has called you into ministry, does not mean you should just fold your hands. You must have to look for something to do, like seriously. We are in another new year. Don't be lazy. Thank God, Minister May Graceful. She's in the house. She's a minister of God, a gospel artist. She works and she still do other things as well. Outside her work. Outside her work. So also me that is sitting down here. So we must not be idle. This is what the, what the word of God is telling us. He said, children of God should not be idle, all in the name of calling. If God has called you into ministry, and you don't look for, maybe you are not even a, a, a general overseer, for instance. Eh? Maybe they just ordain you to be minister. Or they just call you, if, even uh, some pastors, if, or like I will always say, if you have the opportunity, do your work, work. But that will, so far that work does not take the place of God in your life. Provided that work, does not, there are missionaries in the field anyway. There are people that have been assigned to be missionaries. That is just their work and they are still working. They are in the field. There are missionaries, evangelists. No food for lazy man, no mama. Eh? And that is why I said, if God has called some into mission, there is, an, uh, there, there is what we normally need to say. If you cannot go, let your money go for you. Because if every one of us now say, oh, God has called us into ministry. Everybody must be missionary. Everybody must be missionary. Oh, oh we now take care of each other. That is another question. Then the open heaven is now telling us, those that have been called into that, into that specific, uh, specific office, I have a lot of them. I have one, yes. I have one. And if you want to be supporting missions, let me know. I will direct you to support mission work. I have one. And the vision that God gave to her, she's not any other person that Pastor Mary Rogers. That uh, the vision, well, in fact, she's uh, the vision God gave to her. She's uh, the president of the Kingdom Mandate. Kingdom Mandate uh, organization. She is the president. That is a vision that God has given to her. That is her own feet. That she's working. And every one of us must not now go and choke heads there. But what do we do as a children now? We need to do what to support. But if we are not working, like I will always say, how do we support? We cannot. So if, if you know that you don't want to be missionary, get in touch with me. I will direct you so that you begin to support those that are doing missions. Those that are really doing missionary, they are those in Afghanistan. Do you know a lot of people that are in Afghanistan? We have a lot of people in India. We have a lot of people in Korea, that Japan. All these places that they are fighting wars. There are people that are there. There are people that are there. All for the gospel of Christ. But you and I, we have a shelter. We have a house. We have, you understand? We cannot eat sometimes even to do it. And we now begin to say, ah, this one. So let us support those that are in Afghanistan, in Korea, in India. Those that are, that, that are missionaries, like seriously. 
countries that they are fighting wars people are there for the sake of the gospel for the sake of the gospel so our our own is to support them so like i said if you want to support those kind of people just let me know and i will, and i will tell you how to be supporting them every month nothing is too big nothing is too small i'm just saying it you can support with 10 euro with 20 euro every month it's something so that is what we do say if you cannot go let your money go for you but when it now comes to evangelizing or preaching jesus just like the way i am doing now every one of us we have been called into it we have been called into it we have been called into it and even this particular uh kingdom mandate um of this uh, school of missions i'm talking about right now we have another section the intercessor section that intercessor section you can just decide to say okay let me be joining and be praying for people that are on the mission feed that is what we do every wednesday we do it every wednesday by the special grace of god nine o'clock to ten o'clock one hour every wednesday this is how to be committed to the things of god and it's, it's part of service we are serving so I, sometimes i used to say you, you don't even serve god in one we, we don't serve as a, 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 a dedicated christian a, a true child you don't serve god in one spot in one spot you must break loose break out break loose because the work the harvest is plentiful the laborers are few if you want to be part of this intercessors group every wednesday just to be interceding for mission that is what we do nine o'clock to ten o'clock every wednesday we just come together we intercede for different missionaries as the spirit led we are done just like today just like today i'll go to church today i come back from my normal bible a uh, bible study before you know it we do it through through our zoom meeting so you want to be part of the intercessors just to be interceding from for missionaries let me know these are how we can be committed to the things of god because we, like i said we did not go some some of us maybe our money we know if we go but you can create that time to say okay let me be interceding for those that are on the mission feed let me be interceding so if you want to be part of that intercessors group let me know it's just for one hour every wednesday nine to ten we are done that is service this is how we serve god we cannot serve god better than just all these ways i am just measuring now we serve god with our time we serve god with our money you serve God. You know when it comes to money aspect, a lot of us we don't want to hear. Just like this internet now. I pay for internet at the end of the month. It's part of service. It's part of service for God. But I pray that God will give us the grace and better understanding in the name of Jesus. Like I will always say, I don't have a church. Oh. This is just how. But the truth, the Bible says that we know. We set, we set us free. This is my pulpit. Like I will always say, when you see me sitting down here, it's my pulpit. Until I'm done. But I pray that God will give us all the grace to understand. So we serve God through means. You see? So sometimes when you see that God is doing something in the life of people, you don't really know the sacrifices that they are paying. Why? Because they, their heart pants towards God. It is all part of what? Sacrifice for God. It is sacrifice. Like seriously. It is sacrifice. So we must have to do something. That is what the, the open heaven is telling us. He said we should not be idle. We should not be lazy. We should not be lazy. Don't say God has called me into ministry. I will not look for something to do. And, but rather, he said we should do legitimate business do legitimate business that is what the open heaven is telling us legitimate business a lot of us we have our eight hours job we have our four hours job we have our six hours job it is your business it is your business i love telling people the truth but don't just fold your hands without doing what anything that is where it is all wrong and he went for that to tell us there is one thing i want to pick here now and it says doing legitimate business because the lord does not call mediocre mediocre mean God does not have anything to do with negative-minded people. That is why you must watch your cycle. Watch people that we always um, we, we 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 sharpen each other. You understand? People that sharpens you. You have been called into uh, into ministry, and you know that God has called you as a minister of God. Focus on your focus. Focus on what on your focus. That is what I used to say. People that that at least even if you drop one post, eh? People that we see it are not throw away face. They are part of encouraging your ministry. Just as I am here now, I don't take this show of love for granted. You see, minister, I'm a graceful. I don't take this a love. A lot and a lot of them that comes around like this. Is it, not that they, is it that they don't have anything doing? Is it that they don't know the Bible? Is it that they cannot preach the Bible? Is it that they cannot... They can, some of them can even teach it better than me. Like, seriously. 
Just like my mama that left, Pastor Mrs. Angela Mike, God will bless that woman of God for me. She's indeed a mother. She's not here now. She's indeed a mother. Since I started this, this mission, I know the words of encouragement that she has given to me. I know the support that she has given to me. She, she's indeed a mother. And, go, and God, God will bless her beyond her imaginations. That is a woman of God. She, owns, she, she has her own ministry. I used to call her the first lady of Omega Fire Ministry for La Branda, Madrid, for that matter. She has all it takes. And I was like, even telling her, of I said, Mama, you better start coming. You, you, you need to start doing something. And that is iron sharpness iron. Because I know she's a mother and there is something in the inside of her. I told her, and very soon she started something. Very soon she started something. I said, don't worry. We are there for each other. Even if I'm sleepy, wake me up. I will come. Rachel, I want to go to life. Wake me. I go jump, get up. That is Ayo Shabnet Ayo. Minister, I mean, she's here. She's a minister of God. God has called her specifically, like I said, not that she cannot preach, not that she cannot teach. She will still close from work sometimes if, she, if it's convenient for her. Majority of the time, self, she will jump in. A lot and a lot of them like that. Is it that they don't have something doing? No, they have things that they are doing. So I don't take it for granted, like seriously. I can appreciate you 1,001 times because though I know it is our father's business and it's because your heart part towards the things of God. So sometimes it's good we appreciate people. We appreciate them. So God does not work with mediocrity at all. So whatever it, that, that is, is telling us right now that God works with positive minded people. So be so positive this year and move with positive minded people. Because when you are positive and you are in the midst of a negativity, you understand? Be so positive and work with positive minded people. No people that will discourage you. Like seriously. People that will encourage your ministry in, in any area that God has called you. There is no little help. People that will encourage what you are doing. Move with them. They say these are positive. You cannot be positive and you find yourself in the cycle of negativity. It will not work. It will be slowing down your speed, somebody. It will be slowing down your speed. This is what uh, the, the open heaven is telling us. Don't move with people like that this year. There are people that, are, 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 that I call the see me see God. Because uh, it is heaven, no heavenly race. I will not do anything. We are hearing it this morning. When the Bible says, I will bless the work of your hands, a man that is diligent in his business, you will, you will rule. It's a lazy, it's, it's a diligent hands, we rule. Lazy hands, we end up in fourth level. I love the, the book of Proverbs very, very well when it comes to ministry. I love the book of Proverbs. It will make you not to be lazy. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands. What will happen? The Bible says, pop, 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 if the door opens, it's poverty. It will not be your portion, it will not be my portion. And that is why the word of the Lord is coming like this. So work with positive-minded uh, people this year. No people that will discourage you. No people that want to talk you down. No people that want to look down on you. But people that will encourage you to tell you that, come on, there is something in the inside of you. Just keep bringing it out. Keep bringing it out. Just like the latest single minister, I'm a graceful, just drop. This single, the way it, it comes to my heart all the time, I don't really know. It's just like, it's because of me she dropped that song. You understand? Because when I listen to songs like that, I just feel my heart part towards those songs. Even yesterday, after I left the live video, I, 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 keep, I just keep praising God with that song. I just keep worshipping God with that song. She might not even be there. And I have a lot, a lot like that. She might not be there. Just this uh, 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 recent reaction that I did. I was, it was when I, I just said, okay, let me use that two days to just thank God on behalf of my mom. That was how I was able to do it. I would just go to YouTube, I play this song. I go to YouTube, I play this song. Because if I say, let me just be singing, 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 singing like that, maybe I will get tired. Eh? Maybe where there is no instrument or whatsoever. So I just go, I was just playing, playing, playing. Before you know, I finish day one. Before you know, I finish day two. That was how I was even able to react to many of those songs. All these songs you see me sharing everywhere. Eh? Because that is just what I just decided to do on behalf of my mom this year. To just celebrate her, her birthday. To just thank God for her life. 
to just thank God. So if I did the, all those kind of marathon praise, where will the sun just be coming from? Where there is no instrument. Mama, patience. God bless you, Mama. Thank you for joining. So work with people that will support you this year. That we that that we iron sharpness iron. A blind man can never lead a blind man. A negative art can never can never move with a, a, a negative art. Don't do it. Don't do it this year. Do you know what the Bible says? We sharpen each other. The era you are weak might not be the era I am weak. The era you are weak might not be the era I am weak. The era I am strong might not be the area you are strong and the area you are strong might not be the area that i'm strong so we complement each other for growth i will always tell us to be successful in this kind of business physical business or spiritual business for the lord all we need is what is just happening that is just yes negative negative that those are dream killers oh my god bless you then how can you not be you have a dream and you not be moving with a dream killer you have a dream and you are walking around dream killers. They will, they, 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 God forbid. They will not just kill the dream. If you are not careful, you yourself, your life is at stake. Your life is at stake. God is opening our eyes this year to know how we will take our walk. No wonder I was saying it yesterday that it is not all forgiveness that needs reconciliation. Do you know why I said it's not all forgiveness that needs reconciliation? Another thing dawned on me. I got another ministration yesterday after that message. I said there are some people you might have escaped the one that they have done to you. And maybe they did not see anything proper to now owe you. Because they know that anywhere they carry you go, people will say, this person is innocent. Then by the time you give them the chance again, they will not look for a proper way to hang you. Now, they, now neck, they will not owe you in your neck. That you will not be able to know how to do your neck like this. Why? Because you went back. So we have to be wise this year. The open heaven is telling us that God does not work with mediocrity. Then what about you and I? So we don't move with dream killers. Don't move with dream killers this year. And I pray that God will open our eyes to know how we we'll take our, our work this year. Because he said the steps of the righteous man shall be ordered by him. Gone are those days of ignorance. We don't wise. Our eyes don't open. The Bible says we should be wise. Be wise. Be wise like a what? Like a dove. Let your eyes be wise. Very shine it very, very well. Why? Through the scriptures. We are no longer ignorant. Hosea chapter 4 verse 6. He said, my people are destroyed. For what? Because they lack knowledge. Because of the knowledge of God in us today, nobody can now manipul manipulate you any longer. Because why? The Holy Spirit of God is there to always give you the interpretation of every verse, every scripture. No matter how they try to preach it. No matter how they try to teach it. No matter how they try to preach it. No matter how they try to teach it. Just like tomorrow at open heaven now. When I saw it, I said, ah, I know that this open heaven, at least it is, it, I, I, I know that it is people that are writing it through the inspiration of God. But the way God will give you the interpretation, like tomorrow now we are seeing the... Uh, 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 lesson from Elisha part 2 and I think I've, I, I don't even know I've, I've dealt with a whole lot of it talking about we serve we serve men of God when I saw that word I said if a teacher that is the eye that is, is not enlightened with the eyes of the Holy Spirit teach this topic now maybe a lot of people will not listen when I saw the open heaven that we serve men of God, we serve men of God. I said, if a teacher that does not have the deeper revelation of the Holy Spirit, teach this topic, teach this topic. You need to break it down, let people understand. Don't just say we serve men of God, we serve men of God. When the Bible says, thou shalt serve no any other God other than me. So our service to God, we render our service to God. Like I said, talking about serving men of God, you might be in a church and your pastor is there. Only your pastor cannot do the old work. That is the menu. You might be in a church and your pastor is there. Only your pastor cannot do the old work. There is division of labor in, in, in every churches. So no, nobody will just say, we, we serve men of God. We serve men of God. Eh? So when I saw it, I said this one. Why? Because Elisha served what elijah that is what he's trying to say and we know that when elijah was going 
the spirit eh he now requested for what double portion of the anointing of elijah but remember in our dispensation today the anointing that you and i need is through what the holy spirit double portion of the mantle the mantle he, he rested on what because why is Elijah asking, "What do you want me to give to you?" So there, there, there are scriptures. If your, if the eyes of your understanding are not opened, you might not be able to break it down well. And that is why I said, when you get to that kind of level, what do you need to do? Sometimes you just take a walk. Nobody can manipulate us in this end time with scriptures any longer. Thank God for this ministry that God has called me. So I, I will break it down. This guagua it. So we serve, we serve God, we serve God, maybe this, ah, we serve men of God. If you don't serve men of God, maybe, I said it earlier on, your pastor will tell you, oh, God bless you. Maybe the, 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 if, if, if your pastor tell you God bless you, that blessing, it will go a long way. But I will tell you that even if uh, uh, that the GO are able you tell you God bless you, and you will not go and look for work, that blessing will not come. It will not come. Even if that the GO are able you tell you God bless you, and you don't live your life accordance to what god in accordance to the will of god eh that blessing will not come so it is not all about god bless you god bless you god bless you you want to prepare yourself for blessings so these are the little little areas a lot of us we miss it very true many pastors would have let me see that come hey sis minister minister honorable esther all the way from switzerland very true many para Yes, so many pastors would they will interpret that open level tomorrow. Thank God for grace. So when God is sending you on a mission, he knows the reason. Just like Minister Esther writes, very true, many pastors would have it, they will misinterpret it. A lot of people that their eyes are not open to the understanding of the scripture. So once they don't hear we serve men of God, and here. We not first talk, huh? if you don't serve men of God. But you need to let people know what exactly and where, what the Spirit of God is trying to say. So you see sometimes when God involves you in something, before waiting to consign me, I will wait until 12 midnight before I will go and look for that open heaven. But I've come to realize that when you come to public like this, you want to teach, you don't just come like this and you say you want to teach. First of all, commit the topic Commit the topic before the Holy Spirit and let the Holy Spirit give you words ahead. Let the Holy Spirit minister to you. At least you have one or two. Then when you now come to the meeting, sometimes you still see that the Holy Spirit will now begin to add, add to that one that you, 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 you study and to that everything that he has taught you all through the night. So you don't, I don't just come to say, oh, I want to come and see that minister. I just see the topic this morning and I want to teach it. No, I know. But right now, normally in our online meeting, I do the teachings every Wednesday and Saturdays in our online meeting. I do the open heaven teaching Saturday, uh, like this morning. Now I've taught this topic this morning. This is the second time. And the way I'm teaching it now, that was not how I taught it uh, uh, in, a, in a seven o'clock meeting this morning. I see myself flowing in another different way now, right here now. I was, I, I'm, I'm the teacher every Wednesday and Saturday morning. We do our morning devotion online seven to eight o'clock every morning seven to eight o'clock every morning so you see how god works i've taught this open heaven this morning i've taught it so tomorrow thursday now i will not be the one taking it online but thank god for grace i'm not doing it as a daily open heaven uh, devotion so those pe people that their eyes are not open now when they see that topic tomorrow they will misinterpret it like what minister esther just said and it was boldly reading everything. Uh, 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 the, the second example from Elisha is serve men of God. Serve men of God. And in this our dispensation, a lot of people will never want to hear that word. So we need to break it down. How do we serve men of God? Because only them cannot do it alone. In our various, uh, that is why I said, in our various centers of worship, in your church, only your pastor cannot do it alone. In your church, only your pastor's wife cannot do it alone. So if we are talking about we serve men of God, Maybe the open heaven, they did not scatter it and break it down. I am breaking it down. I'm even teaching us ahead of tomorrow now. So when it comes to we serve men of God so that we will know what to say. Like she said, many pastors, many people, they will misinterpret it. They will misinterpret it. For me, if you ask me, our service is needed. 
and we render our service to God in the place of our worship, in the place of God. You are a chorister in your church. That is service. Because only your pastor cannot do it alone. You are an usher in your church. That is service. Because only your pastor cannot do it alone. You belong to the sanitary department. You belong to the cleaning department. You belong to the hospitality department. It's your service. You are in the place of service. Because only your pastor cannot do it alone. And by the time we are doing all these things, our service belongs to God. Because it is not even the pastors that will reward us. But it is God. The Bible says God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So when I saw it serving, serving men of God, why? Because Elisha served what? Elijah. He was a very good follower of Elisha. Elisha followed Elijah. But today in our world, Jesus said, follow me as I have followed what? Follow my footstep. Even Apostle Paul, there comes to a time Apostle Paul said, come. Even as you follow me, follow me as I follow Christ. That is to say, by the time you see that I'm not following Christ again, don't follow me, oh. You better carry your cross. You better carry your cross. That was even Apostle Paul himself. Talk less of this, this, this dispensation of the Holy Spirit. Talk less of this dispensation of the Holy Spirit. Embrace your word. Embrace the word of God. Chew the word of God. The Holy Spirit will begin to break it down for you. That there are some, there, there, there are, there are some teachings you will hear. Your spirit will just be doing it like this. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is ministry to you already. So when God is telling us to do something sometimes, there is a reason for it. I've already studied the open heaven I had. I had. And when I saw it, serve men of God. Eh, somebody will say, hey, is it not Daddy Gio that wrote it? You will serve. So break it down. Like she said, I love this comment. Says, God bless you. A lot of pastors, a lot of people, they will really misinterpret it that tomorrow. But thank God for the grace that he has given unto Rachel Musa. So I am here. I will preach it well for us when it comes to tomorrow. I'm, 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 I'm even preaching the sermon already. So when we hear that word, we serve men of God, serve men of God. And even if a man of God tells you God bless you, it goes a long way. Yes, I say blessings are good. They are anointed, not that they are not anointed. But even you and I, we still carry our, we, we, we still have our own grace. Don't look down on you, on yourself. Everybody carry their grace in different dimensions. Hey, hey. So that is what I used to say. Touch not my anointed that do my prophets no harm. Even uh, uh, the Bible says, He that honoreth a prophet, He that honoreth a prophet in the name of a prophet, right? Shall receive what? A prophet reward. That is what the word of the Lord tells each and every one of us. So we honor people like I will always say. We honor people. We respect people. But that does not mean we should be afraid of them why the only person we should be afraid of is god he said the fear of the lord is the beginning of wisdom so when you fear god you will know that oh i need to respect i need to honor people i need to respect and like i will still say sometimes respect itself is reciprocal according to the bible jesus was humble respect is reciprocal it is reciprocal that is just it even jesus saved he saved so may God give us the grace to understand scriptures this end time. This end time. I told myself there are some teachings. Maybe if they are even just coming, I will just take a walk. Like seriously. There are some teachings. I will just take a walk. Because this is not the time we allow people to use scriptures to begin to manipulate us. And I pray that God will give us all the grace. Respect begat respect. Okay. Minister Esther, don't talk. She said, respect begat what? Respect. Respect begat respect. So you know in our world, this is where you see a lot of people will say, oh, they don't come again. They don't come again. When I saw that word, I say, wow, we serve men of God. <laughs> if we are not break this thing down, where? Well, people are not going to scatter people. That is why they, they, they open heaven. Sometimes you need to pray that the Holy Spirit of God will open your eyes so that you'll be able to teach it well. To the glory of God, not to favor any man. Not to favor any man. May God give us the grace all to understand scriptures in Jesus' name. That topic is deep. It is not by seniority. Yeah. Minister Esther, I never wanted to go there. My minister said it is not by seniority. I said it earlier on. We honor people, we respect people, but we are not. We, we should not fear because the Bible says the fear of only God, 365 days that we should be afraid for. But people today now take respect and honor as if maybe you are afraid of them. No, it is not. There is difference between respect, honor, and fear. And it is only God we are permitted to fear. It is only God. 
And really, when you have the fear of God, you will know that you will respect people and you will honor them. And like I said, but respect is reciprocal. It's reciprocal. But I pray that God will give us all the grace. Because the Bible says, moreover, Elisha did not allow his call to be clouded in. His obligation to honor his father. Because resuming at his divine post as the son of the prophet, 1 Kings chapter 19 verse 20. Let me just rush it down. I spent a lot of time. This confirmed with the scripture that says, Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. That is, you see, we, have, we are just talking about honor just now. And the honor has stepped in. Exodus 20, 12. And the G owner said, It is a dangerous thing to fall in honoring our parents under the guise of neither a new fund of faith or calling in ministry. I will forever be grateful to God who gave me the opportunity to honor my mother while she was still alive. And I received a lifetime blessing from her. Beloved, let us take note of these lessons as we continue to examine the life and the times of Elisha the prophet. So he's teaching us the, the lifestyle of Elisha. Right Today we saw that Elisha was a very good leader and he was a very good follower. He didn't give up. And at the, tomorrow now we are going to be seeing how the, how the man to rest upon him and he, how, how he received the double portion of, uh, of the anointing of what? Of Elijah. And let me tell you something. Like I said, the Bible in, this, in, in the new covenant, the anointing, God has already, the anointing you and I need now it's from what the holy spirit is no longer from prophet yes sometimes they will say ordination 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 but still in the same bible elijah said even before i was born my family if from my mother's womb i've already been ordained so sometimes or know that ordination is not good i am not saying those that want to be ordained and eh, they may never pour the roro but sometimes sometimes like i said even if you don't even have any title do the work of God sincerely. Even if you don't even have any title, win souls for God, preach the gospel, serve God in truth and in spirit. If the trumpet sound, you will go to heaven. You will go to heaven. So it is not by title. It is not by ordination. It is not by this one, that one. It is our work. It is our work that matters most to God. It is not all this title. I will always say titles are responsibility. And a lot of us today, we are so carried away with the titles. Carried away with the titles to now begin to match people's heads, look down on people. And these are the people that God has given to us. Some of us, not all. These are the people that God has given to us to still help us in this place of service. Just like tomorrow now, like I said, talking about serving men of God. <laughs> if I, that topic eh, is deep, I am still asking for better revelations concerning that topic and i will not rest because when i saw it today i said i'm going to ask good questions about this topic tomorrow so that at least let me get it from people that have at, at least gone far in ministry but you get to talk about seven men of god i'm asking my husband i will go and ask that topic that is the open heaven of tomorrow i will ask it today how do we serve men of god not that somebody will just say you have to serve man of god eh so we will break it down tomorrow together. After, I, I want to go and ask more questions concerning that topic of tomorrow before I will come here and teach it. And I pray that God will keep us all. If Jesus tarry, God will keep us all to tomorrow. Today is our, is, is our service in church. I want to ask that question. Because when I saw it, like I said, there are people that will pick up that topic now. They want to teach it. The way they will teach it. Uh, even you yourself, if you are not careful, maybe you, you will end up that blanket and just be sleeping there. But I pray that God will give us the grace to understand scriptures in this end time in the name of Jesus. It's good to serve God, not that we don't serve God, we serve God, but how? But how? When we talk about service, how do we render our service to God? Find our good, we serve God through men. Because the Bible says, the God that we have not seen, right? We cannot proclaim that we love God that we have not seen when we don't love the men that we have seen. That is service. That is service. So we need to break it down. How do we serve God? We serve God through men. Because every good leader today was once a what? A good follower. But like the only one I don't like, when you refuse to be manipulated, you refuse to compromise your faith, people might look at it that you are not a good follower. But don't worry. That is where you now carry your cross and follow Jesus. When you refuse to be manipulated, I repeat my words, yes. You refuse to compromise your faith. 
People will say, ah, this one, she's not a good follower. She's a very bad one. They will not say you are a rebe. They will call you a manners of name, arrogance, pride. Why? But give, but begin to compromise your faith and, and, and allow them to begin to manipulate you anyhow. They will call you a manners of name. They will tell you more grace, more fire, more anointing. More grace, more fire, more anointing. Why? Because why? Hmm? You, you, you allow them to begin to manipulate you. Do or if I, I pray for somebody today. Like I said, it is God that giveth grace, not man. He said, my grace will be sufficient for you. So I will always tell people, even if people tell you more grace, more grace, more grace. Is it really coming from a genuine heart? That is another question. When God has graced your life already. My minister, I'm a grace. Is she still there? Minister, I'm a grace. Why are you still there? A lot of us, I'm not moved. Whether somebody tell me more grace or not. If you tell me to God be their glory, if you don't tell me to God be their glory. A lot of us, God have graced our life already. So it is not how far, it is our way. Like my minister uh, Esther said. She said, I'm here. Minister, I'm a graceful. So even if somebody don't even tell you more grace, you are already graceful. You are graceful already. Overflowing one, Abby. So sometimes there are things that does not move us again. That is it. The word of the Lord says, my grace is sufficient for you. Because like I said, when you refuse to be manipulated, and you, re you refuse not to compromise your faith. People will call you whatever they want to call you. That is where you will not carry your cross and follow Jesus. And say, Father, it is you and you and you and you and you and you and you alone. I refuse to, manipulate, to, to, to compromise my faith. I refuse it in the name of Jesus. But I pray that God will give us all the grace. It's good to serve God. It's good to put your hands in the plan and you don't look back. And like I said, we, we, the Bible also tells us to be wise. We need to be wise even in our place of service. Even in our place of service. You carry the cross. You don't give up. But that does not mean you are what? You need to be wise even as you carry the cross. Find our good. Sometimes the Bible says we have to act foolishly, right? We have to be foolish. All these things, we need to be breaking it down so that we understand it very, very well. So like I said, for tomorrow's topic, I really go for deeper consultation. And uh, uh, let me ask at least people in ministry, what does this word really mean? I love that interpretation that Minister Esther, uh, uh, Minister Esther Chronicle said that. Um, this is your Minister Esther Chronicle. Eh? It's Minister Honorable Esther. Eh? Minister Honorable Esther of the Esther Chronicle TV. <laughs> Minister Honorable Esther of the Esther Chronicle TV. Like she said, a lot of people with so much misinterpret that open heaven tomorrow because maybe they don't want to look at it at their physical eyes. So for me, before I will not come here tomorrow to evil teach, though I've already gotten everything I, I wanted, I've gotten it already through other nights. Oh my God bless you through other nights. But I still want to ask a whole lot of questions. Like I said, coming to teach like this, you need to do study, you need to do research, you need to pray, and you need to ask the Holy Spirit of God to interpret. Because you are not the one sending your own. I'm not the, I, I'm, I'm not the one sending myself, I mean. So I just have to let God interpret before I'll speak anything to give me a better revelation. There are some scriptures I see now. Like I said, even the way I'm teaching it this morning, that teaching was, it was not even up to 30 minutes. The teaching I did this morning, I don't even think it was up to... I think it was from 720, 700, it, it was about 20 minutes or 20, 25 minutes, I mean. I think 720 to 745. But take a look, the, it was, it's, still, it's still the same teaching I'll be teaching. Some people can even turn it to money, money talk only. <laughs> you see why they talk? Mama, sis, let me say I go go as well. How do we really, when, when we say serve God, you cannot give from empty pocket. <laughs> I know that a lot of things will actually come. So thank God for grace. And I thank God that today is Wednesday. I'm going to church. So before I come up live tomorrow, I need more and more understanding about that open heaven. And the, 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 the person I want to go and ask that question today, at least, he is not just a, he's a teacher indeed. He's a teacher. When you talk about teacher, he is a teacher of the gospel. He is an evangelist. An evangelist by calling. So let him break it down. Let him break it down. Maybe I will even read it to his hearing today. 
Eh, so he should give me more. He should explain more to me. I want to know more because I want to teach. The Bible says, whatever you have learned, teach it out. And I know that the Holy Spirit of God is already in charge, is already involved in the name of Jesus. When I saw it, I said, hey, it don't set for you. It don't set for you. Why? Because the Holy Spirit of God is already in charge. So God bless you, wonderful people. I really appreciate every one of you. Like I said, I don't take this for granted. Our actual point says, take time to study Prophet Elisha on your own, and it will surprise you how many lessons the Holy Spirit will teach you. Feed the pot. You oh see, see, come and tell you come over. You just know where they go. Fill the pot before tomorrow so that you can dish out for us. You see, today, and if I, I they go, let me go and come back. So tomorrow we will not know what it means to serve men of god i want to know what it means to serve men of god uh -huh. let me know if maybe you did not allow somebody to carry cutlass and remove your neck eh you are not serving god i want to know i want to know that one or you did not just allow you do, do do we see a lot of them today and these are the kind of things a lot of them don't really know that they are, they are that they are manipulating them today how do they manipulate them how can a pastor tell you to eat grass and you are eating grass have we not seen Let's tell ourselves the truth. Have we not seen? A pastor is telling you to eat grass. And you are eating grass. Because you serve man of God. So I want to know. If just like Apostle Paul says. When you see what I am doing is right. He said follow me. By the time you see what I am not doing. You better carry your cross. Carry your cross fast fast. So that does not mean that you, you are no longer serving God. So I want to know. That is what I want to know. Today. Eh? That is just what I want to know. Because there are some things when you refuse to do, they will not say this one a rebel, too stubborn. You are not a good follower. You are not a good follower. You are, you, are, you, are, you have rebellious spirit. <laughs> there, are, there is what we call only rebellion for God. I refuse to be manipulated by anybody. Never, never. I refuse to compromise my faith. Never, never. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they refuse. We saw it. Daniel refused. Even Joseph refused. These people, are just, they refuse. Ah, huh? Haba. So it's not until you allow them to begin to match your head. Eh? They will tell you to eat grass. Peace. Shit. That means that you are a good follower. Because you don't want them to call you names. Don't worry. So tomorrow, like Minister Ahmed said, I want to go and feed the pots. We will dish it out together here tomorrow. By God's grace, if Jesus starts. God bless you, my wonderful people. Our actual point says, take time to study prophet Elisha on your own. And it will surprise you how many lessons the Holy Spirit will teach you. Even before I go to church eh, today, this topic, I don't just want to come here because I know that there are teachers that are listening to me. I know that there are people, like I said, I'm just, I'm just that little girl. I'm just that little girl that I've decided. So, Father, use me for your glory. So, sometimes you, you, you get more, more, more enlightenment from people. So, there are some topics I see. The Holy Spirit of God. If After the Holy Spirit of God have ministered to me, I will still ask two thoughts. Even before I go to church, there is a call I will make this morning. Let me first of all ask that question. How do we serve men of God? I, want to make, I will make that call after this life, even before I go to that church. Because before I come from church, it will, I will not be able to call again. Let me, let me read that, that open heaven and find out that word. What does it mean? We have to serve men of God. <laughs> tomorrow, get ready for tomorrow's topic. I've seen it already. I've studied it. I, I had already. So let me do more findings about it. God bless you all in Jesus' name. <laughs> Mama, I appreciate every one of you. God bless you. Our actual point is that we should take time to study Prophet Elisha on your own and it will surprise you how many lessons the Holy Spirit will teach you. So uh, there are a lot of lessons we need to learn. And even this Elisha and Elijah mantle. And if you not serve the men of God, by the time we serve man of God, the anointing to, to your next level, the anointing will rest upon you. Somebody. Let me tell you something. Let me, the Holy Spirit, eh? So you see that 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 that, uh, that transition between Elisha and Elijah. That was the same transition when Jesus got baptized and the dove opened 
and the dove enter into him, which was the Holy Spirit. That was this. That was the same transition that took place in the Bible at, at the book of Acts of Apostles, chapter one, verse eight. That was that is the same transition. That was the same transition because I've heard a whole lot of a whole lot of teachings, a whole lot of teachings that are contradicting to the scriptures. But thank God for grace. That is why we must study to show ourselves approved unto God. A workman that needed not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing what? The word of truth. I am not saying men and women of God praying for us is bad. Like I will always say, sometimes you too, you need to build your utmost faith and learn how to pray on your own, first and foremost. Because the, best, the prayer you pray for yourself is even the best one that sometimes God, God can even answer most. But don't get me wrong, I am not saying men and men of God should not pray for us. And number two, even if you receive prayer, sometimes you need to act by faith, you need to walk by faith because the Bible says faith without work is dead. Do you actually know that in this dispensation, there are people that will say, Oh, if I don't pray for you, you will not go far? Who is it that said, And it's coming to pass when the Lord has not commanded it? There are people like that. That we think that if they didn't tell you God bless you, God will not bless you. There are people like that. So we have to be wise. So when we see scripture, there are people like that that they will use all these scriptures to manipulate. That if if maybe somebody don't tell you now, God bless you, God will not bless you. When you are walking, hey? And what you are doing, God sees that your hand is clean. Your heart is, hey? I will bless the work of you. They do your eight hours job. Minister Amen. You are doing your eight hours job sincerely and you are faithful. You have a ministry that you are running sincerely and you are faithful. God will not bless you. And maybe at the end of the month, you pay your 10 10 percent. God will not bless you. So until one person can open your mouth, he must come not to not tell you, say, God bless you. God will not go bless you. I pray that God will open our eyes in this end time in the name of Jesus. Prayers are good. We have fathers of faith. We have mothers of faith. I am not standing against it. Prayers are good. But sometimes, don't allow them to begin to manipulate you. You have to stand. There is a level a child grows up to. There, there is something that my son, eh? My son now, my, 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 my first son. There are some things now he will not even ask me again to do, which I know he can do for himself, as grown up as he is. It's just like, as my son don't be rich, he will go to the toilet now and tell me to come and clean his snatch. And because I did not clean it, I will not say, I will say the bumper will not be clean. It's impossible. It's impossible. Except maybe I don't want to teach that my son to grow. Except I don't want to teach him to grow. We should be wise in this end time. And I pray that the Holy Spirit of God will continue to open our eyes to see more of him, to know more of him. Now, 12 years, I did... <laughs> Mama, even 12 years, there are some things you cannot even do for 12 years again now. There are some things. There are some things. It don't be like a, a 12 years go back, finish. You'll say, Mama, come wear me pint. Oh, you'll say, Mama, come wear you pint. Except I don't want to teach that, that boy. I, I don't want to teach him. No. No. Our own is to see that even our children will do much more better than us. Our own is to see that our children will grow. They will do what those things that we cannot even do for ourselves. Our own is to see that our children, they do evil exploits. That is a prayer of every good father and every good mother. For their children to begin to... And if, if, if their children are doing all these things, who is going to receive the honor? Is it not the parents? They will say, oh, this boy, this girl. Oh, the papa with the mama trainer away. Oh, they have a very good... This, this boy, this girl has a very good upbringing. The honor will always go to the parents. The honor will go to parents as well. And that is why every, every, every leader out there, fathers and mothers of it, eh? at least their prayers should even be their children should do much more better than them. That should be their prayers. And they will support by all means. They will support by all means. And I pray that God will give us all the grace. So whether they even support, they don't support. Too. Somebody carry your cross and follow Jesus. Because on the air, at, at, at the air, you will not say they did not support me. That is why I did not do my father's business. So there are some things, like I said, that comes our way. That will even make us to be getting stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger in the spirit. It's just like somebody will say, you know what? If I don't pray for you, you will not succeed. Hey, hey that is even a challenge on your part. 
It should even be a challenge on your part for you now to be serious with God. It should even be a challenge on your part for you now to be serious with your father in heaven. Our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Our father. The Bible did not say your father or my father. Our. It's our. <laughs> our father who art in heaven. Our. It's our father. God bless you all. May God bless this world into our heart. Hey, hey, you see Sister Rachel. May God bless this world into our heart in the name of Jesus. So I think we have done well for today before all the old phones will start misbehaving right here. I've done. So we are studying. May God give us all the grace to know more about Prophet Elisha in the name of Jesus. And uh, my prayer, like I will always say, if my, my, my joy to prove them wrong. Yes, so oh, mama. Hey. There are some things you face in life that will challenge you. Even if Esther, you are still there. You never enter white in this morning. There are some things you see in life. Like I say, the, 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 how do we used to put it? Uh, there is another that says, the bigger the mountain, the bigger our God. The bigger the mountain, the bigger our God. Because God is bigger than every mountain that we climb but we cannot see. So there are things, some th there are actually things sometimes that will make you to, 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 to be strong. That will make you to be strong. It will even help you to not be growing. You really want to know more about this God this time around. God, I want to know you. I just want to know you. Only you and you alone. Hey. 2022, let's get ready. This year is sweet. It goes sweet too much. It goes too sweet. They that know their God shall be strong and do exploit. And I pray that we we'll continue to know this God. I will continue to do exploit for Him in the name of Jesus. There are some things God wants to do in your life, in my life this year, that no man will take the glory. Watch out for those things. There are some things God is about to do for you and I this year, somebody. <laughs> no man will take the glory to himself. And that is why I say sometimes there are things you need to back out from. And you challenge God on your own. Now you born me. Now you be my papa. Now you send me message come life. Who has the final say? Jehovah owns the final say over our life and our destiny. May God give us the grace to understand this word this morning. That there are some things you see in life. Instead of crying. Instead of weeping. You challenge yourself. And you stay strong. Because by the time you are crying and you are weeping. You are getting weak. By the time you stay strong in the powers of God's might. God will continue to strengthen you. And renew your strength. God bless you wonderful people. I don't take this for granted. Thank you for always stopping by. Thank you for always coming around. Tomorrow we are going to see more of Elisha. In the name of Jesus, if Jesus tarry, so let me as well ask, go for research. Let me go for research. Tomorrow, we'll continue from here. God bless you, Minister Esther Chronicle. As usual, you see the time I'm spending now. So this time around, it is very well with me. The kids are back to school. And this time, is sometimes as they go, I want to rest. So I'm still going to do this premiere. I will just go and put it there. Eh? I will put it there. But at least once in a week, I'll be doing my normal life directly on YT once in a week. I'll go and do the live video there. Bye for now, sis. Thank you for always being there. God bless you for your support in Facebook. Everywhere you are always there. I see you everywhere and God sees you as well everywhere. My mama in the house, Minister May Grace, God bless you. Mama, patience. Mama, I salute you. God bless every one of you. For as many that are watching, even as many that are watching on the ground that did not write anything, God bless you all. Oh. God bless you all. I celebrate every one of you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. By the special grace of God, if Jesus tarry, we are going to see tomorrow morning by God's grace. God bless you. Bye. God bless every one of you. Blessings, my people. Shalom. <laughs>